Andy Johnson. Today, I hope to answer the question, why are administrators such bad problem solvers? Let's define our terms first of all. A problem is any situation in which the present condition does not match the desired condition. The real is different from the ideal. Hmm, here's the real, there's the ideal. Problem. So problem solving is simply moving from one to the other, from the present to the desired, from the real to the ideal. Simple as that. But often, and I'm using administrators as a placeholder, not all administrators are bad problem solvers, and I'm looking at school and university administrators, as well as anyone in an organization that seems to be a bad problem solver. You come up with these ideas, these solutions, and you say, what were they thinking? Well, more often they weren't. But why are there so many ineffective solutions for rather sim uh, seemingly simple problems? Two reasons. Reason number one, problem solvers don't know the basics of problem solving. They don't know some basic problem solving skills. And we're gonna look at two problem solving heuristics creative problem solving and means and analysis. These will get you through most problems in life. Very simple, very simple, very simple. The first is creative problem solving. There's the thinking frame, define the problem, generate as many solutions as possible, select the one that seems best, elaborate and refine. And there's a graphic organizer you can use, generate, best idea, elaborate and refine. In first grade, we teach a much simpler version of this. Define the problem, simply generate a whole bunch and choose one that seems best. Problem, bunch of ideas, best idea. We teach this basic problem solving skill starting in first grade. A more complex version would be after you define the problem, get some background information. And you can see the problem, this nice graphic organizer, ideas, and then a solution. Simple as that, simple as that. The next one is means and analysis. Describe the current state, describe the desired state, and simply generate a list of things or necessary steps to get you from one to the other. And there's our nice graphic organizer, current, desired, things that need to be done. Simple, simple, simple. The second reason is problem solvers often don't know how to brainstorm. Now, two types of thinking are necessary to be an effective problem solver. You have to generate a whole bunch of ideas. This is creative or divergent thinking, but also you have to evaluate ideas. This is critical or convergent thinking. Effective problem solvers are able to use both kinds of thinking. Ineffective problem solvers often use one but not the other. And creative thinking is most often excluded because people don't know how to brainstorm. And that poster should be on all classrooms and anywhere posted where people are making decisions or trying to solve problems. Step one. All ideas must be accepted. Have you ever started brainstorming and someone says, oh, that won't work. Oh, we tried that. That's evaluative thinking. It limits the thinking. All ideas must be accepted without evaluation during the brainstorming process. Nothing ruins good decision making like someone who tries to evaluate an idea during this brainstorming part. Freewheeling is celebrated. Freewheeling is creative, bizarre, silly, unusual ideas, even smarty pants comments made by someone. Why? Because that expands your thinking. It may trigger you to think of something else. You might associate it with something else. You want a lot of ideas and a wide variety of ideas. So yes, we celebrate this freewheeling. Third is the goal of brainstorming is quantity, number, amount. The more ideas you can generate, the greater perspective you have on the problem and the more possible solutions from which to choose. So 
generate a lot, a lot, a lot. And hitchhiking is welcome. Hitchhiking is when you expand an idea on an idea already presented, or you take an idea and you add to it or elaborate, or maybe combine one or two ideas. These four steps, four rules should be posted in any decision making place. Now, ineffective problem solving. What usually happens when there are ineffective problems? They usually use this. They identify a problem and they identify one idea. They fixate. Oh, here's the solution, they say, and they fixate only on that and they do not see the expanse of possibilities. The second one is to find a new program or idea. I call this shiny new thing syndrome. Oh, there's a shiny new thing. Let's try it. And then they look for a problem. Whenever someone uh, introduces a new program or an, an initiative, you should always ask, what's the problem we're trying to solve here? What is the problem for which this is the answer? Is it just a shiny new thing that you think we should do? What's wrong with the old? Always identify the problem first. Another one, you identify a problem and then you look for an answer that works someplace else. Well, it worked last year, it worked with this group, so it must work here. Or you identify a problem in one area, such as education, and you use an answer that works someplace else. We see this common in education when people try to bring business leaders in or use the business model. The business model works for business, where profit is the bottom line. Education needs education answers because people are the bottom line. The next ineffective problem solving is you identify a problem and do what someone else recommends. Oh, this person recommended this, that group recommended this, this panel recommends this. And again, that limits your possibility. And what someone else recommends, they don't know the particulars of your situation, your problem, your people. Or the last ineffective problem solving is simply doing what someone recommends regardless of whether there's a problem or not. Oh yes, they recommend we do this, so let's do it. They must be famous, they're famous, they must know what they're talking about. And again, it's solving a problem for which there may not even be a problem. We don't have to be ineffective problem solvers, we can be effective problem solvers. Let's be, shall we?